in summary, what we've done today, we have loaded in basically a base map firstly so we can just see where we are in the world. So that's this um, map. This is still selected. There we go. And just want to select anything. <laughs> There's always some standards so we can just see the world. Uh, in order to do that, we had to install a QGIS plugin. Um, called Quick Map Services. And that Quick Map Services gave, a, gave us a, a menu of options that we can use for base maps. And they're o based on open open data sources. Then we went over to Geofabric DE. I'll hop over there real quick. If I still have it open. And this is a consultancy based in Germany. And they're big into open source and open geospatial uh, work. And they offer services on top of that. But I think they honor the spirit of the data and tools, including allowing or providing for um, downloads. So I'll just pop this in the chat for anybody who's interested in checking out the data. You get these OpenStreetMap kind of dumps. They're basically the OpenStreetMap raw data file, more or less, format. Or you can go in a little bit uh, lower level of detail or higher level of detail, something like that. Zoom in <laughs> and pick your country and get shape files, which are a really common um, data format. So uh, what we did is we just grabbed this Finland shape file. And it's really nice, the, the shape files are, are separated into multiple layers. And um, sort of part of this session was just to go through and check the layers out, get familiar with them, and give them a little bit friendlier names. The um, naming conventions are a little bit, uh, well, difficult to interpret. One of the early lessons that I learned, uh, again, is to work with a small subset of the data uh, when you're doing anything like even just inv inspecting uh, the data. Um, w instead of working with the whole of Finland's, uh, it's like 1.1 gigabyte data set mo broken into several shape files, some of which have like hundreds of thousands or millions of rows, I'm not sure. We just defined a a new layer called boundary, added a polygon here, and used that polygon to clip all of these um, other layers. So basically when you create a new layer in QGIS, you can edit it, and it's got tools, depending on the, the layer type, to add uh, geometry there. So in our layer, we just created a new shape file, and we named it, or we put polygon shape file and named it boundary and then added this square. From there, we're able to run a vector processing tool called Clip. And we used the batch process in, uh, to select all of the OSM layers, uh, You know, just check them all off. And then the overlay layer is like the cookie cutter shape you're using to clip it. So then from that one, we selected the boundary layer and had some troubles, but Basically, you output output the um, oops, sorry, the file name here. You can use a, an expression and make sure. So like I said input layer. You can concatenate uh, a string to it, or whatever, or clip or something like that. Maybe I should use single quotes. Uh, so it's not set because I don't have an input layer. And one of the other things is make sure to pick your output directory. I didn't do that and everything ended up in my home directory. But after that, you'll be able to run all those. There's multiple um, layers, you know, we clipped every single one of them. So then we had a reasonable amount of data to work with. And you can just start to see, you know, how many points there are just in a small, like a few, like five or so uh, kilometer wide. Uh, five or ten kilometer wide rectangle here. Yes, and from here we just started to work with a couple of layers and created a simple, a uh, couple of simple derivative layers. Uh, all this, I'll try to get this onto GitHub soon once I get a better um, sense of it and how to, particularly how to share the open data, the der derived data. But we took these points of interest and ran a filter on them to. Uh, select only the um, uh, supermarkets and convenience stores. If you look at this F class and the points of layer, uh, points of, um, clear that out. And 
there's all sorts of points of interest uh, that are, have been tagged in OpenStreetMap, beauty shops, bicycle rentals and shops, cinemas, colleges, dentists, doctors, furniture shops, hairdressers, ho uh, hotels, schools, monuments. Uh, and for a particular, uh, whoops, um, purposes, we're just looking at where people can get mostly fresh produce. And I think convenience stores uh, sometimes have fresh produce. Supermarkets generally have fresh produce, if not by definition. Um, so we were able to take those points and actually save them as a separate layer, a uh, derived layer, more or less a filtered layer here, food sources, and I can just toggle the OSM data. And from there, I wanted to be able to ask a simple question. How many um, residents are within a f like a one kilometer walking radius from food sources? And for that, we just ran a geo processing or vector processing tool called buffer which lets you specify a distance and it'll draw a buffer around shapes of various types uh, in fact in our point types you generally end up with a circle because it's just taking that radius around there but other types uh, will create different shapes of buffers so yeah, it's essentially very crude uh, but it allows us to see you know, what houses are within walking distance, more or less, uh, of a convenience store at the very least, and places that might be out of that zone, uh, or even whole neighborhoods where people just have to use a car. It also could point to places where the data is incomplete. Um, so that's where we're at. Next, uh, what we'll probably do is try to create a new attribute on these houses based on their membership, whether or not they're in or out, of in or, yeah, it's Boolean, whether or not they're inside or outside of that uh, radius, and color code the houses based on uh, proximity to food source. And eventually we'll perhaps be able to work our way up into more and more complicated um, layers of analysis, uh, liv livability analysis, and even letting people run ad hoc analysis through a user interface of design, but we need to work through these basic layers and get the data in the right shape uh, before we can put it back into our web app, the Open Source Sustainable Urban Design app. Well, thanks. This has been a CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. If you're interested in participating in this project, you can stop by github.com slash sustainable urban development. If you'd like to get involved with other uh, learners and potentially open source projects, stop on by CodeBuddies.org. CodeBuddies is also an open source project and being rewritten. Uh, the project is being hosted on GitHub at github.com slash CodeBuddies. There's a Python backend and a React JavaScript frontend under works in separate projects. And both of those projects are very um, welcoming and supportive of new contributors. Thanks for your time. Have a great day and stay well out there.